I'm curious on your end how you think of women's economic power. What does that look like in terms of decision making or in terms of economies? What it looks like first is that they're more equal in terms of education. They're more equal in terms of jobs. But what it really should mean is that they know their outside options. Do you see the word empowerment and power differently in some sense or no? Well, I see that uh, I think about it in so, sort of in two steps. The first thing is that you have to enable people to go to what we call the frontier, mm -hmm. the frontier of what they can do. But when they're at the frontier, then you have to give them the ability to, in some sense, utilize it. We spend women and girls 12.5 billion hours on unpaid labor. How do you think about if we could unlock that unpaid labor, what the difference would make for women? By unlock it, I think we often mean monetize it. We often mean putting it into the labor market. All we're going to do is we're gonna transfer an unskilled person's labor into an unskilled labor market. In fact, we could do harm. I think particularly in a place like the US, what we should be doing is thinking about upskilling these jobs. Given that the current administration finally has caregiving on the agenda at the national level, does that make you more encouraged? Well, I must say that, that when the pandemic first began and we first took stock of what was going on, I was writing short pieces about the fact that I am really feeling very, very good. I'm not certain what's going on now because that conversation seemed to have stopped. Yeah, that was to me one of the most more discouraging things after COVID. That in COVID, it was right here, I always say, in our face because if we were on you know, any video call, we could see the kids running in and out of the parents' cameras, right? And the parents are trying to help get the homework done, but then it feels like we we somehow decided not to completely address it after that was over, right. which I think has been a bit discouraging. Now, I hear you brought a magnifying glass. Do you want to tell me a bit about that and why? I'm a historical <laughs> detective. I am depicted in the Nobel pictures and I am pictured with a magnifying glass looking at documents in the archives with a golden retriever by my side. Oh, that's lovely. I love that. <laughs> Do you think we have enough female economists in the world today? Of course the answer is no, but we have a lot more. And I think we have figured out how to increase the numbers. The object I brought is a phone. And the reason I brought a cell phone is because when I travel often uh, in these low-income and middle-income countries, the thing that is making a difference for women economically is their phone. When I think of women and power and money is them having a digital ID in their own bank account on their phone, which just wasn't possible 25 years ago, right? I think I may have had a piggy bank, but nothing to put in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for this conversation, Claudia. Well, thank you, Melinda.